मैरिज एंड मेडिटेशन पार्ट टू लेयर्स ऑफ एनर्जी ये स्टडी आई ऑन द फर्स्ट पार्ट एंड आई सेड दिस इज लाइक पेंडोरास बॉक्स द मोर यू गो इन टू इट मैनी थिंग्स बिगिन टू सर्फेस यू हैव टू लुक इन टू इन ऑल इट्स टोटैलिटी yesterday i said the physical body operates at the level of has two aspects masculine and feminine when these two are merged into one another you are neither male nor female psychologically and this is symbolized by hindu symbol of ardh narishwar half male half female when you look at the shivas because that shiva is the only hindu god that is manifested as symbol of creation half of his side is masculine and the other half is feminine it is symbolic but then when i meditated or looked into where should i begin today we have to look into man is a seven story structure there are certain stories below and it will be difficult to understand unless we speak these different layers the seven bodies and how in each body the masculine and the feminine aspect to work whenever you feel attracted or repulsed towards someone it is because of your etheric body this aspect is known as life force which is pran or as william raish calls it or gone or energy particles and how does this operate in seven bodies one is masculine the other is feminine life force is the living energy within us i had spoken that you are embodiment of light light or awareness but it does not work on its own it activates just as electric force does not work but it activates certain things for the process to begin it activates certain a particular instrument which is dead air conditioner makes it alive gives it an impetus and it begins to move but the manifestation is different when the same electric force or electrical noor or electrical light begins to work through heating system manifestation is different so the life force at the physical plane it comes in the form of light in the form of breathing breathing has two aspects air you breathe and along with that the particles that come in the light begins to come within you in the form of energy particles and as energy comes that is birth and when it flows through the rest of the body within us the process begins this energy manifests itself through the physical body as incoming and outgoing breath at the physical body these are the two masculine and the feminine aspects incoming breath and outgoing breath breathing has two aspects the incoming and the outgoing breath however we assume these as one breath is life breath is energy breath is the bridge between life and death now which is masculine and which is feminine just as the two aspects of brain mass the left and the right they differ in male and female 
they are reversed in a female. In case of a man, the right side is masculine and the left side is feminine and in female it is reversed. So in the same way, this breathing, incoming and outgoing, the incoming is birth and outgoing is death. This happens at the physical body. Breath is a bridge between life and death, between alpha and omega. Breathing is one of the most fundamental systems. It needs to be looked after because if you are not breathing properly, you are not fully alive. Because of fear and because of many other reasons, we begin to breathe improperly. And if you are not fully alive, then almost everywhere you will be holding something. Even in love you will be holding. You will be unable to communicate entirely. Something will remain incomplete even in love relation. One who does not breathe properly cannot remain in the present moment. He cannot be meditative. Also, if you are not living in the present, you cannot attain the flowering of meditation. Your body is the temple of the unknown. It is the miracle. Do not neglect it. Instead, respect it. The harmony that body creates may become the door and thus become the door to the inner harmony. All that you experience within manifests through the body. If you are harmonious, elated, joyous, full of bliss, it creates an energy field around you and manifests through your physical body. Breathing is the alphabet of the body. Just be aware of it. Body is the cross that has to change alchemically. That is why my so much emphasis is on the cross. Also through breathing, you can be easily linked to meditation. Incoming and outgoing breath has two wings of one reality, but we continue to neglect. We take them as one. Each has a polarity. It exists at two poles. It cannot exist otherwise. Thus these two poles, along with tension and harmony, create energy. This is quite similar to electrical energy generated through magnetic poles. Breath has two aspects, incoming and outgoing. The incoming breath is quite contrary to the outgoing breath and vice versa. In Vigyan Bhairav Tantra, Shiva speaks of 112 techniques of meditation. Most of these are based on incoming and outgoing breath and its movement. A single mom moment, at a single moment, the incoming breath is like breath and outgoing breath is like death. Both are happening every moment. When you inhale, light comes in and when you exhale, breath goes out. Thus every moment there is life and death happening. This is polarity. With this comes in life or energy. This is how life energy manifests itself at the physical body. Life energy takes both and then after a span of time it disappears, this we call as death. Birth is a manifestation and death is even a greater manifestation of the same phenomenon. These, income and, these incoming and outgoing breath are like day and night. This physical energy manifests differently through seven bodies. The physical, what are the seven bodies? 
physical, the etheric, the astral, the mental, the spiritual, the cosmic and the last the nirvanic body. In each of these bodies there will be a corresponding incoming and outgoing breath as male and female aspects, masculine and feminine aspect, animal and animus. In the mental body this incoming breath assumes the form of thoughts coming and outgoing breath as thoughts going. Every moment thoughts comes in, thoughts come in and go out. These thoughts are energy. So these represents the incoming and outgoing breath in the mental body. The incoming and the outgoing represents masculine and the feminine aspect. It is not important to know which is masculine and which is feminine. It keeps on changing depending on your innerness at times. At times you are more inclined towards love, other times towards aggressiveness. It changes accordingly. There is a correspondence between the breath and thinking. This is the reason that our thinking pattern changes with the breath, with the breathing patterns. So when you hold breath, the thoughts cease to move within and when you stop breathing in the physical body, thoughts stop penetrating at the level of the mental body. That is why as you sit down in meditation, breathing becomes silent, the inflow of thoughts become very slow. When you enter into love making, when you start, your breathing is haphazard, there is a chain of thoughts. As you continue to move in the air, slowly and slowly your breathing becomes rhythmic and then a point comes when you are not even aware that you are breathing. It becomes so silent and that time for the first time you experience a state when there is no thought. When there is a gap between two breaths, there will be, there will certainly be a gap between two thoughts. When you start meditating, you start meditation, your breathing gets calm and calm. Breathing becomes rhythmic. Just as breathing is an essential prerequisite for the body, so too thoughts are essential for the existence of the mind. Without thought and thinking, mind cannot exist. That is why it says, it is said, as you go deeper into meditation, mind begins to dissolve. And then you say, I am neither the mind nor the body. And an ecstatic Shankar says, Mano buddhi hankar chittani naham. I am neither the mind, nor the body, nor the intellect, nor the ego sense, nor the memory. Then what am I? Am I, I am the bliss, the eternal, the unmanifest Shivoham, that aspect which is not born. Why it is said Shivoham? I am the Shiva, that aspect which is neither born nor dies. Instead, it comes into existence out of its own free will. Just as breathing is the essential prerequisite for the physical body, so two thoughts are essential for the existence of the mind. Without thought and thinking, mind cannot exist. Before you breathe in the air, it exists outside you. So two thoughts exist outside your mind. As you breathe in, 
air comes in so whatsoever air you are breathing in is not yours it comes from many sources many sources you are in the room there are many people your friends and foes all of them are exhaling whatever they exhale that becomes part of the atmosphere and from there you are inhaling you are inhaling your friends and foes together simultaneously body does not make any difference in that whether you are breathing in the friend or foes when thought comes in whether you are in bringing in the thoughts which are beneficial or which are not is a free flow it comes from many sources it remains yours only as long as the air is within you as soon as the air comes out it becomes cosmic and can move to another source so is the case with the thoughts just as my breath can become yours so to my thoughts can become your thoughts and with thoughts and with breath energy comes in so what is happening in the session of the meditation i am speaking my thoughts are creating a group within your consciousness it will become your understanding your and with that understanding your energy field will begin to change and this is what actually happens as your breath goes out thoughts also go up air exists the way thoughts exist air can get contaminated so too can thoughts with this a misunderstanding comes we begin to consider the air that we breathe as prana indeed prana or the life force of alan white is energy but it manifests only through the polarities of incoming and outgoing breath the energy that takes the breath in is life force the breath itself is the container or the carrier to take the energy in the energy that takes the breath in throws out is life force the energy that takes the breath in and throws out is life force or prana in the same way energy that takes the thought in and takes the thoughts outside is life force or prana but at the mental body the first is the physical body second is the mental body so what happens at the mental level also happens through the other bodies as well we are aware of these two bodies physical and mental alone only these two are known to us you can understand them very easily what happens in the physical body and the mental body also happens in every layer of your being the second the next body is etheric body etheric body has its own incoming and outgoing process such process you will feel in each of the seven bodies since you are familiar with the physical body and the its life force as prana you will feel such process only as incoming and outgoing breath in that case you will always misunderstand the manifestation of life force or prana in various bodies it always happens whenever there is a feeling coming to you of another body or its life force it always happens as incoming and outgoing breath alone it is so because it is the only experience that you know you only know the manifestation of prana or life force as vital energy in the physical body however at the plane of the etheric body 
there is neither breath nor any thought movement. Their life force manifests as influence. There is simply incoming and outgoing influence. Now how does it happen? Sometimes it happens you come in contact with someone who you have never known before. He has not yet spoken to you. Yet still something about him or her comes into you. You either allow this influence to come in you or you do not. This influence is subtle in nature. It may create an attraction in you towards the person or may cause a repulsion. These are the two polarities. Attraction and repulsion. When the influence creates an attraction, there is love. If not attraction, then repulsion. You know what to call this. You do not want me to tell you. It is hatred and love. Whenever you feel attracted or repulsed towards someone, it is because of your etheric body. Man continues to operate at the different levels of the body. This process of attraction and repulsion goes on every moment without any break. You are continuously bringing the influence either within or throwing out. All incoming influences are love and outgoing influences are hatred. The polarity continues. You have to go beyond the process of meditation is to go beyond the polarity at each level of the body. Beyond the thought incoming and outgoing through thoughts, beyond incoming and outgoing breath, beyond incoming and outgoing influence as love and hatred. The two poles always exist together. When you love someone, then certainly a moment will come when you feel repulsed. You are attracted towards food one moment. When you are satiated, you are repulsed. You move away. This is what happens in love making as well. There has to come a moment when you are totally satiated, we are satiated only for few hours. We eat food and we feel satiated at that moment and then after some time we feel repulsed when we are satiated and then again this process continues. The same thing happens in love making. If meditation, the dimension of meditation is added to anything that you do, to any act that you do, whether you are eating or not eating. What is the difference between an ordinary man and a master? Master is meditative in every act that happens through him. That is why it is said, it is not the frugal meals that I eat that gives me the energy. The energy comes from somewhere else. Food is the only container that brings that energy into it. Through food I am able to harness the entire energy of the cosmos into it. A single act of love making is capable of transcending you beyond that. And if it does not happen, you are nothing else sim but simply prostituting. Love transcends beyond the dualities. You are continuously bringing the influence either within or throwing it out. When you love someone, then certainly a moment will come when you feel repulsed. And that's where the problem begins because we are not meditative. The incoming influence brings love sentiments and then with outgoing influence the sentiment of hatred comes in. Thus each moment love is followed by the moments of repulsion. Vital energy always exists in polarities. This energy cannot exist 
on one pole alone. And when you try to make it happen, you are trying the impossible to happen. No one can love without hating them at another time. That is why there is a beautiful book by Simone Wells, The Intimate Enemy. Love and hatred are two sides of the same coin. They exist together and disappear together. This vital force cannot exist on one single pole. The polarity exists. A friend is bound to be an enemy one day. This goes on. Unless meditation comes into it. This process of incoming and outgoing continues up to the seventh body. Nobody can exist without going through this process. We never take this polarity into account, so we are not disturbed about it. So far as life is concerned, it makes no distinction between incoming and outgoing breath. Morally, there is no distinction. Both are same. So there is no distinction. It is neutral. But as far as the second body is concerned, hatred need not be there. Instead, love has to be there. But when you begin to choose, the choices that you make will be against the other. And this is what happens in life and it creates disturbances. This is the reason that the first body remains healthier than the second body. The etheric body always remains in conflict because of morality. This moral choice has rendered it miserable. When love happens, a feeling of well-being comes in, and when hatred comes in, you tend to feel diseased. This is bound to happen. So a person who understands the nature of polarity is always at equilibrium. And Buddha's whole emphasis has been on creating equilibrium, to creating, to create the balance. He knows its nature, he knows it is bound to happen. So he never tries to be loving when love is not flowing, nor does he create any hatred. Things come and go. He is not attracted to the incoming nor repulsed by the outgoing, remains 